In today's video, we're going to be diving into some really incredible discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope. Discoveries that, once again, don't really make sense, and discoveries that are currently super difficult to explain. And I guess let me show you what we're actually discussing. It's something right here. And yeah, it's very, very difficult to see. Yet based on one of the recent studies, researchers are now pretty certain there seems to be something unusual in here, and it's something scientists now refer to as Capotaro, or maybe Capotauro. I'm actually not entirely certain how to pronounce this. Either way, you can kind of see it right here. And so once again, James Webb was able to push the boundaries of current observations and present us with something that we currently cannot explain. And so either this is something that's going to force astrophysicists to completely rethink how the first stars and galaxies came to be, or maybe this is some other bizarre object much closer to us, and potentially something that once again we've never seen before, but is nevertheless just as exciting. And so let's talk about Kaputauro a little bit more and discuss some of the most likely explanations we have right now. Now first, what exactly is this, why is it so strange, and how exactly was it discovered? Well, right now, the most likely explanation for this is that this might be the farthest galaxy we've ever seen. But the scientists behind the study proposed this with a lot of caution. But first, let's discuss some of the important concepts when it comes to observing these objects, just so that we're all on the same page. Let's start with the idea known as the Cosmic Dawn. The idea that was mostly based on theoretical predictions and certain glimpses from the older telescopes like Hubble that suggested a gradual slow buildup of stars, and of course galaxies, that very likely lasted for a few hundred million years, but was also initially thought to have begun a few hundred million years following the Big Bang. You can sort of see this summarized in this image from NASA. And so the first galaxies were believed to have started approximately 400 million years following the Big Bang, with the first stars appearing after 200 million years. But then as the James Webb started to observe the same region, it started to discover something maybe a little bit different. It almost immediately became pretty clear that the universe was much more active and way more chaotic, and seems to have formed galaxies much, much quicker than expected. And so even though observations from Hubble sort of met the expectations, here the Hubble telescope could only see up to the redshift of 11, or basically approximately 500 million years following the Big Bang. But the James Webb, that was specifically designed to observe the infrared light, was able to see much farther away and was able to detect objects from distances nobody expected. And as of May of 2025, so essentially just a few months ago from when I'm making this video, the most distant confirmed galaxy is what's known as MOM Z14. The galaxy you can learn about in one of the videos in the description, and the galaxy that already existed 280 million years following the Big Bang. With this being a very bright, very compact object, but also forming stars at a ridiculously fast rate in a virtually dust-free environment, with a total mass equivalent to the Small Magellanic Cloud, one of the satellite galaxies of the Milky Way. So this was a large galaxy, a bright galaxy, and of course was a huge discovery that surprised pretty much everyone. And so even this galaxy presented us with a bit of a challenge. The models struggled to explain how this object, with so much mass and so much luminosity, could form so quickly. And that's because the gas in the early universe was supposed to be way too hot, which would make it much more difficult for stars to collapse and to form rapidly. But the James Webb might have outdone itself once again. Because this time, by using a technique known as near-infrared dropouts, in order to spot ultra-distant objects, researchers behind this recent study spotted something that seems to be even more bizarre. But here it's actually important to understand what this means. So when the telescope observes something, it actually looks at different wavelengths by using very specific filters. You can see some of them in this image. Here's what this instrument and the filters look like, and you can see each of them represents a very specific wavelength. And so these filters detect galaxies by capturing their light across a very specific range of wavelengths. But in these observations, using multiple filters is very important, because it then enables us to see through cosmic dust that usually obscures galaxies in visible light. And specifically, it also allows us to detect key spectral features, such as, for example, very specific hydrogen emissions, whose redshift can then be used to approximate distances. And so here, by looking at how bright the galaxy appears in various filters, it becomes possible to estimate the approximate distance because the galaxy becomes only visible in certain wavelengths, but not in others. And so if by some chance we find a galaxy that seems to be invisible in most filters, but is still visible in some of the longer wavelengths, 
It potentially suggests we've discovered one of the most distant galaxies discovered so far. Here's, for example, observations of a typical galaxy at average distances, and so it's only really absent in one of the filters, but it's still visible in five others. And that's not at all what we see here. This object is invisible in most filters, and is barely visible in just two. Which is technically what this technique was called, near-infrared dropouts, or any object only visible in these extreme wavelengths, and not visible in anything else. And so the point was to look for objects that suddenly disappear, indicating a significant break in their light spectrum. And that's how they found this Capotauro, named after an Italian mountain. And this seems to be an extremely faint object, only visible in the Sears survey, but also characterized by an extreme dropout at 3.5 micrometers. And here, when scientists, including Giovanni Gandolfi and his team, analyzed the light coming from this object, they got an incredible result. The preliminary redshot for this seems to be 32. And yeah, let me repeat this again. 32, which is way, way higher than 14.4 from that previous record holder. And so what does redshift 32 mean? Well, it means we're seeing Capotauro as it was when the universe was only 90 million years old. If we go back to that image of NASA's history of the universe, it would essentially be somewhere in the middle right here, where we technically did not expect stars to even exist yet. And this would also be about 200 million years before that previous record holder, MOM Z14, and would also represent the very beginning of cosmic time, comparable with the formation of the first stars and first black holes in the entire universe. Making this not just the record galaxy, but also a kind of a window into the unimaginably early era, with very deep implications for how we understand galactic formation and galactic evolution. But there's obviously a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of puzzles in regards to this object. For example, Capotaro appears unusually bright for such an early object and for something so far away. Here, its rest frame UV luminosity is comparable to some of the most distant sources known today, including massive galaxies like GNZ11, suggesting that its mass is at least 1 billion solar masses, and suggesting that if this is real, our models just cannot explain this at all, because it's only 90 million years after the Big Bang. It would essentially require ridiculously fast star formation with 100% efficiency, which goes against all models. But before we get too excited, and before someone starts canceling the Big Bang theory once again, this is a very early candidate. Because as we've learned from some of the previous candidates and previous detections with the GMWST, the universe has a tendency to produce these mimics. Objects that at first appear really far, but when scientists conduct more thorough observations using spectroscopic analysis, and specifically looking for elemental emissions that then allow us to determine exact redshifts, in most cases, all of these objects turn out to be much, much closer, sometimes actually in the local neighborhood. And on top of this, there might be some contaminants or interlopers that can cause sharp drop in light, potentially making this look like a distant galaxy. For example, this could be a dust obscured galaxy where the light is just missing, but in reality, this is just at a much lower redshift. So if this is just an object covered by dust, it might produce similar emissions. But even though dust could maybe explain some of this, Capotaro's extreme break strength makes it quite difficult for dust alone to reproduce all of these infrared emissions. At the same time, there might be something more exotic here, such as a mechanism like a compact active galactic nucleus or a compact black hole covered by a dense, gas-rich environment that scientists now refer to as little red dots. And so objects like the cliff or MOM BH1 could also serve as one of the potential explanations, especially because when it comes to these objects, we barely understand them as well. But at the moment, the emissions from the little red dots still seem to be just a little bit different from Capotaro, or Capotauro, I seem to pronounce this word different every time. Likewise, there's also something known as strong line emitters, foreground galaxies with very intense but very specific colors that can sometimes trick us into thinking they're much farther away. Here's one such object we've discussed previously, Sears 93316. This was initially thought to be a candidate at redshift of 16, but turned out to be much closer with a redshift of 4.9. And so this is maybe one of the potential explanations. But there's also a much more exciting and even more bizarre explanation that also makes sense. Maybe this is not a galaxy at all, and maybe this is not even something that's far away. This could also be some kind of a cold, substellar object, such as, for example, a brown dwarf or even a free-floating planet, with very distinct atmospheric absorption features that can also produce these very sharp drops in light, possibly resembling a distant galaxy. 
In other words, there's a chance that this is not something super far away, but is instead an object right here in the Milky Way that seems to be just some kind of a planet. As a matter of fact, the light signature in this case seems to resemble very cold brown dwarfs such as Y2 or Y3 types, whose temperature is usually around 300 Kelvin or actually not so different from what we have right here on planet Earth. In other words, there's a slight chance that what we're looking at here is something with a temperature of Earth, but something that's drifting through space completely by itself without a star. But in order for this object to resemble Koputauro, it would still have to be relatively far away, possibly hundreds or even thousands of light years away from us, which is technically not impossible. And if confirmed, this would make it super exciting. This would be a record-breaking cold distant brown dwarf, which we've only seen close to us at a distance of about 50 to 60 light years. But this would also suggest that this object is pretty old, because if it's real, it would be located inside the thick disk or even the halo of the Milky Way, so essentially outside of the thin disk that contains most of the stars. In this case, by being inside the halo or inside the thick disk, this object would probably be billions of years older than the solar system and planet Earth. And so whether this is a brown dwarf or some kind of an exoplanet with 13 masses of Jupiter, this will be the first such object discovered with terrestrial-like temperatures and observed at such ridiculous distances. But the main problem with that explanation is probability. The chance of detecting such a substellar object in this survey based on this one observation is extremely low, just 3%. And so I guess to summarize, we have no idea what this is. But whatever this is, it seems to be super exciting and seems to be the first such object discovered in any of the JWST's observations. But honestly, in terms of astrophysical explanations, right now the planetary object makes just a little bit more sense despite low probability. Mostly because if this is an astrophysical object super super far away, it's going to be ridiculously difficult to explain this. And so even if it's not a Redshift 32 galaxy, this is going to be an exciting object to come back to and discuss more once there are some additional observations. But whatever this is, is going to force us to rethink everything we thought we knew about the universe and about either galaxies or planets. Because if this is something far away, it means that structures like stars, black holes, or galaxies might have been incredibly good at forming early on. But if this is a planetary object, or some kind of a brown dwarf, it would suggest that these objects are also much more common in a galaxy, and potentially exist in numbers we never considered before. Which essentially highlights how extreme and intriguing this source is, no matter what the explanation turns out to be. But, once again, just like with previous observations, we now need to wait for spectroscopic confirmations. And in this case, it usually involves identifying some kind of a peak in some of these wavelengths and then determining what element this might be. Maybe hydrogen, maybe oxygen, or if this is a planetary object, possibly a lot of complex elements. And so right now, all of these estimates are just based on that one picture and based on the light disappearing in certain filters. And so the redshift of 32 right now is just an assumption. And so once we have spectrographic observations from the James Webb's near spec, we can then break down some of this light into individual colors, allowing scientists to see specific chemical fingerprints. And that's why JWST is such an incredible telescope. It's able to see these individual elements at ridiculous distances, which allows astronomers to find out exactly how far away certain things are. And by design, it's able to observe things up to the redshift of about 30. And so if this is a galaxy, it will be able to confirm this in the next few months. But at least for now, that's pretty much all we have. We have new surprises, we have some exciting discoveries, but more mysteries than answers. And so once the James Webb discovers something else about Capotoaro and its origins, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. And if you think you know what this is, let me know in the comments. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt featuring James Webb in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.